Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to talk to you about rewording commit messages in Git. I'll talk through the commands and I'm gonna show live animations on the screen of what's happening under the hood while I'm issuing those actual commands. Let's get started. Git provides two ways to update commit messages. However, there's one big caveat that you need to know before utilizing this process, but let's start with an example and I'll get into those later on. I'll run Git log so you can see what my repository looks like at the moment. And I'm also gonna pop out those first few characters of the commit hashes into my animation. They'll be relevant later. Anyways, I'm working on my master branch, and as you can see, I've gotten four commits. But if you look a little bit closer, I made some pretty egregious spelling errors on that second commit back from my head commit. Before we go any farther, I'll point out that if you wanted to update the commit message of only the latest commit, the process is quite straightforward. I just issue the git commit dash dash amend dash m and specify a new commit message. This command will update the latest commits message and you're done. Now I have a whole video on git amend and I'll link that in the description or in the pop-up that just appeared in the top right corner of your screen. But back to this example, I wanna update that second commit back from head. So unfortunately amend only works on the latest commit. So to manipulate those historical commits, we need to reach for a different tool, rebase, everybody's favorite git command. And we'll use what's called interactive rebase to reword those commit messages. So to get started, I'll type git rebase dash I, and that dash I means interactive mode, and I'm gonna pass the argument head tilde two. What this does is it tells Git that I wanna operate upon the last two commits. And of course you could pass any number to this. You could do head tilde four, for example, if you wanted to manipulate the last four commits instead of two, but I think you get what I'm saying. I'll just hit enter, and when this runs, Git pops into our default terminal text editor. In my case, that's Vim and probably yours as well. Now at the top of this file, you can see it grabbed my latest two commits and added them there right at the top. The rest of this file is just one big comment that acts like some documentation about what commands are available to you during interactive rebase. For now, we're just gonna focus on that reword command, but if you wanna learn more about interactive rebase's other powerful commands, I've got dedicated videos, and you can find that link that just popped up in the right corner of your screen. This may look confusing, but it's pretty straightforward once you understand what's going on. You can think of interactive rebase like a list of commands that will run in sequence on each of the commits specified at the top. So once we save and close this file, Git will execute each one of those commands in order. Now each line contains first what command is going to run, followed by which commit that command will run on. So because I wanna update the commit message, I'm gonna change the pick command to reword in front of the commit that's misspelled. This will tell Git to stop at that commit during interactive rebase's execution and give me a chance to reword that message. And I'll leave pick in front of my latest commit because I don't wanna change that commit at all. You can think of pick as sort of like a no-op command for rebase. Now that I have that, I'll just save and close the file to start this process. So in Vim, that's escape colon WQ. And once that file is saved and closed, Git will start executing interactive rebase and pop me into another text window that's gonna allow me to edit my commit's message. So I'll just press I to enter insert mode in Vim and I'll go ahead and fix those spelling errors. And by the way, this file also has a big comment that tells me what step in the interactive rebase process we're currently on. It's also gonna tell us what files are in the commit that it's currently operating on. So once I've gone ahead and updated that commit message, I'll save and close the file again. And in this case, it's Vim, so it's escape colon WQ. And now as you can see, Git has gone ahead and finished that interactive rebase process and updated my commit message. And I can just double check this if I run git log one line, my commit message is now updated. But wait, one big caveat that you need to know about interactive rebase is that it essentially goes back and replays the changes introduced by each of those commits back onto your branch. So because we operate on those last two commits, each of those commits was essentially rewritten and replaced by a new commit with a new reference. In our case, even though we changed the commit message of that second commit, we still went back and rewrote the last two commits, which results in two new commits and two new references to those commits. As you can see in the before and after, the hash identifiers are different, meaning those commits are replaced. What all this means is that when you use interactive rebase, you wanna do it only on your local changes, but after changes are pushed into a shared repository, where there's a chance that others could base work off of those commits, you wanna stick away from using these interactive rebasing tools because you can cause confusing situations for your other collaborators. If you wanna learn more about interactive rebase, and trust me, you will wanna learn more because it's an incredibly useful tool, I've got a dedicated video diving into interactive rebase's mechanics, as well as each of those interactive rebase commands that we saw earlier. There's also a written article on my blog that explains everything we talked about today. But as for me, that's all I've got for this topic, and I will see you later.